Eric Burgess here and today we're going to be doing some creative sampling with Melodyne. So my idea here is we're going to make some crazy sounds with a vocoder and then use Melodyne to push those sounds even further into the realms of who knows what. So let's jump into it. So first things first, I'm going to make a drum loop. I'm just going to skip right to the part where I have a drum loop and then we'll start making the vocoder sound. All right, I've constructed a basic drum loop going for something pretty groovy here. So this is what I've got thus far. So of course we're gonna fill it in, maybe change out that sort of weird sounding kick drum, but I, I picked it partially because it is really weird sounding. So let's go ahead and start up a basic um, drone sound so let me really quick whip that up and then i'll show you where we're at all right so i went ahead and really quick made a basic melody first before i actually started working on the sound so this is our basic just line just a saw wave really really simple so far It's going to repeat because I want to focus more a bit on the sound design at the moment. So I'm going to go ahead, pop this open and make it a little more interesting. All right. So I've really quick just touched up the sound a little bit, some basic effects, a little bit of compression, distortion. The sound I would like to do a detune on here, but this is going to be the carrier sound. And so it needs to have a pretty wide frequency range when I do the vocoding. And then to toss it into Melodyne afterwards, we might go ahead and attack it from the Melodyne perspective. I'm just thinking about this. Because if I have it with the detune down an octave, it sounds like this. And of course, we're not doing any automation yet. If I actually bring it back to where it was. I think the, this version will do a bit better with the Vogue coding. It'd be an experiment, but I'm, I'm debating with this right now. Let's move. I might change. All right. So I have a bunch of these like random scat files. So I went with this one of yelling. Just because, you know, that sounds like a fun thing. We're going to go ahead. We're going to send this into a track, uh, track five, whatever. And then we're again going to just route it. Whoops. I hate it when I accidentally scroll over those. Uh, we're going to route it directly to track 20. So there we go. And then on this track, we are going to take this and make sure that we've selected this for the modulator. So this is going to be what modulates our carrier. And let's see here. We want the crazy scat. It's basically just channel five. It just got named something crazy. And okay, cool. So now if we play these at the same time, uh, the synth will begin to take on the qualities of this. And uh, I realized I accidentally had it on, I think insert 19. I don't even remember, but uh, I had a third thing in here that I didn't realize. So make sure you've got it on the harmer for the, for the carrier or, it, or it's not gonna work. So let's go ahead and hear this. And again, the modulator needs to be the voice. <laughs> So we're getting some pretty interesting stuff out. I'm going to do a couple things that usually it's a good idea to mess with bandwidth. Band distribution is another fun one. I'm going to bring this down, bring this down. So you remember before how I was debating this move right here and saying what the frequencies fed in get? It's the opposite of what I thought before. So if I have it on one. Now, check it out on two. That's so much cooler. <laughs> it's pretty important what, you, what you're feeding it. So, uh, yeah. So, as you can see, there you go. So, that's the final decision on that one. I'm going to continue to really quick fine-tune the vocoder, and then we're going to record this bad boy in. Maybe add in a couple different ones. Let me just show you what it sounds like when you switch these out, because it could be really fun. Let's say that we have this one instead. We got to send it to the same track, track five. That the other one's going to. So here it is with the ba da ba. And versus just the uh, the yelling. And then of course we could chop these up in interesting ways to get really interesting results. 
All right, so I've just finished my first draft of this. It is sounding pretty dang funky. This is what it sounds like. And then of course we'd continue on. I'm just gonna be simple right now and just copy it over and go ahead and record this to a file so that we can then use a Melodyne to see what weirdness we can get out of it. It's going to record out what's going through there and we're left with the result. Now for the rest of this, we want to mute it. So I'm going to uh, hold down the right alt and click drag over everything to mute it. Right alt will, when you click, will use the mute tool automatically. So now we've got just the vocoded part. All right, now what we're going to do <laughs> is we're gonna add a Melodyne. I can't remember if FL sees it as a generator or not. Melodyne, no it doesn't. So it's gotta be in the effects panel. So we're gonna come in, we're gonna to go to a blank thing. We're gonna call it Melodyne with a lot of exclamation marks. We're gonna add in a Melodyne. Go ahead, hit enter. Wait for it, wait for it. It's a, it's a complicated program. Oh, I got to activate it real quick because uh, I built a new PC and I'm going through the process of reactivating everything. Just a sec. All right. So we have been activated. So we're going to grab our audio and just. So we're going to record our audio into this thing and have a good time. So to do that, we need to arm transfer. And then we need to just play it in, but Melodyne needs to be seeing this audio directly. So this is on track 16. So I'm going to go ahead and send this to track 16. Uh, that way it'll go into the Melodyne while the transfer is on. Just a sec. I clicked it, right? Yeah, okay. So we're going to go ahead and hit play. I'm going to detach the window and this is just going to make it float on top, uh, which is way down here at the bottom. So now it's on top of everything. So I don't need to worry about it going away. So let's go ahead. Let's uh, record this in. Great. So we're going to let it do its uh, algorithm thing. All right, beautiful. Look at this horrible mess that we've got here. So it uses the polyphonic detection, which is interesting because this isn't regular audio we're feeding it. We're not feeding it a voice or probably anything it's been trained to see. We're feeding it this crazy vocoded synth line thing. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna mute this one since we're not gonna be using that one right now. And what happens is uh, as we hit play, it's going to play back in here. And so it's gonna move around and match our playhead position. So it automatically locks, which is just super great. So what we're gonna do now is come in here and you can see it sounds exactly the same. So the first things I'm kind of curious about are these sliders down here. These are kind of like our, our general sliders. We talk about these in every one, but I'm doing this sort of real time. So just sort of showing you the process of experimenting I go through. So I'm gonna take the brilliance down, sort of acts like a filter. Okay, uh, up next, we've got our contour. Let's hear this. You know, it's really interesting that that's the sound, this sound right here, because this sounds like, uh, it, it must be because they're kind of similar vocoders and what this is doing. Because uh, if you have a vocoder with a lot of very narrow bands, it tends to get this classy kind of quality that's just like this. Very vocoder result right there. Uh, let's go over to the square wave. That's going to be interesting. We might mess with that some. And then we have our comb filter. Oh, that's dang cool okay so we might need to find a way to move this around let's go ahead and come in here and let's make this window bigger shall we and 
something that's always interesting is to grab a bunch of these. Where were they? They were on... They were there. That's where they were. And let's drag one out really long. Maybe not super long. Drag it off the grid. Drag it off. Drag this one out, maybe. And move it over. Actually, like, compress it. And this is where things can get pretty weird fast. Right, we gotta control it here. Okay, I'm gonna loop this section. So there's a variety of ways to get stuff out of Melodyne. What I'm gonna do, because I, I kind of just want to spot check stuff, is I'm gonna have an instance of an Edison afterwards. That's uh, whenever I find something interesting that I'd like to record in, I'm essentially going to record arm this Edison, do the weird thing, and then pop it in that place. That's my the way I will often grab things out of here. Uh, if you're working in uh, a DAW that's got AMA, then, or is it ARA? I can't remember. It's the audio random access. So it's, I think it's ARA. Uh, then you can uh, do this a little more smoothly, but it's not that big a deal to just have something right here to, you know, you hit record, you record it, and you just drag it in. So let's go ahead. Let's uh, continue to move this around again. I need this for navigation purposes. <laughs> Okay, so I think it'd be kind of cool if I had this on the square wave and then I pushed it this way and I replaced this part of the audio with that. So we're going to go ahead and pull up that Edison again and I'm going to detach it as well. This way it's floating. I don't know where I should put it. My screen's kind of cramped. So we should probably close the uh, browser, give ourselves some more room here. So we're going to go ahead and just hit on input. Actually, on this one, we'll do on play since it'll put a marker for us, which is really useful. So we're going to go ahead and hit play and move this. And what did I want to move? I wanted to move this one. Beautiful. So now we come in, we select the thing that we want. I control X, control A, delete, and then control V. So it's perfect but you may do uh, your own version of whatever that is. So now we've got, very nice. So I'm gonna go ahead, drag this in, and this small modulation is gonna replace at this segment. So we're done with this one. Let's go over to the bar three. I know I ignored bar one. What the heck, we'll leave bar one alone. And let's go ahead and see what bar three has to offer us in terms of stuff we could possibly do. Let's reset our sliders. Uh, I kind of want to try messing with the comb filter. Oh my gosh. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and record this in. So I'm going to hit again on play. This time I'm going to let it loop a couple times because uh, it'll be easier to, for me to let it loop once and then get my recording in. So let's go ahead and do that. <laughs> Okay, so we've moved a couple of the things along and what we could do is we can actually drag this in and then delete this and we'll move this off to the side for a second. I'm going to line this up so it starts right there. Chop off the rest of it by hitting the right shift and then click drag. And what you can do is you can use the shift tool to move around. I'm not sure if it's called the shift tool, but that's what I call it. This double arrow thing. And you can move it around and the markers, if you see here, there's a marker placed. So you can see wherever the start of each one is. 
And we could even chop it up in different interesting ways and get all kinds of new rhythms. So we've, we've additionally, I could talk, I swear. We've additionally given ourselves a bunch of different ways of modulating this one section. That could also lead to a bunch of different rhythms if say, for example, we choose to, for example, cut right here and then mess with this segment. And of course, it's playing back with the Melodyne right now. I, I could bypass it later, but you can see where we get crazy with this. So this is going to open up a lot of doors right there. Let's move on to the fourth measure and create something interesting. And then I'll probably stop after the fourth measure. Let's see if we can't do anything sort of weird with this ability to stretch uh, to stretch various nodes out like we were doing on the first one. Like, What, what happens if we stretch this out? Hold Alt to drag off the grid. And let's see what this sounds like. Kind of vibes off that short part, but keep in mind, this could be, if we repeat this in different segments, we could have variations on it. So I can keep that short part for maybe another segment. We've already got that recorded. So we've essentially, using the harmonic editor, just like written a new rhythm right there. It'd be kind of cool to maybe let's see how rhythmic we can get it. Let's, uh, let's make this shorter. And then what if we lose a couple of these? What's that going to do for us? Anything? <laughs> I think that's pretty dang cool. Okay, let's uh, lose these up here. Why not? So you can get these really, really interesting filter effects too. Like, could you imagine trying to make a filter that does this? It, it'd be insane. Like, and to be able to augment it so that rhythmically it's different, it's, uh, Melodyne never ceases to blow my mind. So, perfect. Let's go ahead and grab that. So we're going to just, like that. We're going to, again, control A, control X, or I, you, uh, control click, control click to select everything between two regions. And then we'll just paste it in there so it's perfect. And we'll grab this and we'll drag it in. And okay, let's say that we're all done with this. I mean, this could go on for quite a while. We, there's more tools we could touch. We didn't even get in any of the additional things in there. Uh, so that's totally fine for what we want to do here. So we've got ourselves our hall of interesting sounds. And let's go ahead and turn uh, this bottom one back on. Come in here, turn the Melodyne off so it doesn't keep playing. Turn the Edison off to you just for good measure. Control D to deselect. And we've now got this. Let's go ahead and cut this out. Whoops. Make sure you're on the right tool when you do that. To get to that menu, you middle mouse click, left click. I hear that one a lot. So let's go ahead, pop. Actually, let's keep these right where they are so we know that they're part of a different process. <laughs> So maybe right here, we merge it a little bit and we take the volume of this right here and we create an automation clip. We do something interesting. Maybe we fade it in or maybe we fade it out. So it hits, it fades out. I mean, we, I leave the last point alone. So it resets for the rest of it. <laughs> And I mean, even here, we could get more interesting with our layer from Melodyne and we could add a cut right here and maybe be all sudden on this one and have it just pop in. And then what would this sound like if we made this one unique, make unique, and we tried pitching it down an octave? Would that be cool? Up an octave? Oh, I'm touching the wrong one. This is the one. <laughs> that is pretty cool. Uh, I can't remember if we're allowed to automate this, can we? No, you can't. So let's only mess with this first bit. So I'm going to make it unique, pull it up, 
and leave this one how it was. So I've just augmented just the pitch of this one segment because this over here would, would be kind of weird that low. Yeah. And this one I have down the octave. Okay, so we've got a really, really crazy section here. This is something I'd have to go through and fine tune and add more sounds and more processing and, and get really crazy. But we've gotten a bunch of, I said that really weird, we've gotten a bunch of really unique results. And sometimes this can just turn out something so cool. You're just like, no way this was the result. And then other times you need to layer with things because when you're messing with things this severely, a lot of times you usually get layer sounds out that'll sound well when merged with additional sounds. Cause you know, you're removing all these harmonics and sometimes they sound kind of thin as a result. So they work great as layers, not necessarily as full fledged sounds when you're doing like really crazy sound design like we are right here. So all together, I mean, this is what where we're gonna stop. <laughs> so there's still like there's entire sounds that i'd like to replace with something really crazy like right here i think melding this with an fm and some sort of a square wave movement would sound really cool this sound is an idea i think it would be cool if we replaced it with some sort of a chord that stabbed right there so we've got what we've got here is an outline for where we'd like to go and we've got a lot of really interesting layer options as a result of pumping it through something like melodyne so uh, if you're looking for some really interesting ways to take advantage of melodyne maybe you don't have a lot of auto tuning that you're fixing up and and you know fixing performances you're looking for a more creative way of using it this is a fantastic way to use it that can really just Give you a lot of inspiration to fill parts in so as you saw i mean right at the beginning make a drum loop got a really basic line going jazz the line up added a vocoder added melodyne to the mix and now we've got a, a lot of directions we could go to really make this pop and stand out if you have any questions about this feel free to let me know subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos and have a blessed day <laughs>